I am a king. I am with the Council of Global Issues in Toronto, where science for peace make proposals around food security, energy, and all of this. I fully resonate with you. You remember me of the daughter of David Suzuki, 92, in, in Rio. And she was just a little younger, but it was the same urge. So I really urge you to become more strong. And I can only tell you, I do all, did all this since the early 70s, ecological modeling, environment, UN, ECOSOC, all this back and forth. I must tell you, since 88, I not learned much. Already there, we discussed rapid climate change. All these issues were on the table. And in Rio, in Rio, with the UNU and UIA, we tabled the intersectorial strategic dilemma of sustainability dialogue to really see, to bring it to the broader public, that the issues and sectors are connected. Some people in the UN understood this. And they started already earlier with the G7 harmonization efforts because they need to talk the same languages. So I'm, I really congratulate this Congress here that you say we need a new science, you need, we need new mindsets, new reframing our thinking. But how we do it? Some processes were done with young people some, since 20 years, but they're not brought up. And how, why is this? Because the old thinking in linear thinking, dualistic thinking, just in words, T.S. Eliot wrote, make words solid are not enough. The solution space does not match the problem space we are facing here. And in Copenhagen, this is a pre-announcement, we will revisit 40 years of original intentions of the Club of Rome, which was predicament of mankind and problematic. I have Alexander Pristaki there. They showed that we only not have prognostic futures, moral scenario, but if we don't put in the uh, participatory and normative futures, we are lost. This was revisited as a predicament of this original perspectives. And I urgently ask you, why don't we know about this? And why don't we make this issue so plastic that people from the hand and the heart change their lifestyles, change their living habits, change their tr uh, transportation and energy sites? Is there anyone in particular you wanted to address the question? <laughs> well, I think maybe we'll help you. But... Uh, I think you posed a very important question, uh, but uh, in rather scientific terms. Now, let me respond very quickly scientifically and then maybe broaden it in, in more general terms. Uh, I believe that we are moving into this into the region of non-linear responses, not only climate, but also all the other ecosystem collapse, the multiple crises, even the financial economic meltdown, not linear, okay, no one can predict. Now, we have to build in feedbacks, and the feedbacks have to come through people. Okay, this is the most important. You have, to, you have economic capital, you have natural capital, we have social capital. Unfortunately, the social capital is all driven towards greed, as I said, the wrong value systems are sustainable. It is the social capital that we have to build, starting with the young people, so that you have the negative feedback loops. These are adaptive systems, uh, combined uh, economic, natural, and social systems, but uh, negative feedback loops. Currently, everything is positive. So that the higher the stock market, so the crazier people get nuts and you say whatever. So the, again, I come back, I'm a civil society person, we have to work with people. It is people who will make the change, who will make the economic system work better, who will protect the natural system. That's my answer. The negative, adaptive feedback mechanisms will solve, I hope, hopefully all the problems, including climate change, at the same time, not one by one. Thank you. Uh, what is, uh... Short comment. How can we do that? Um, 
We are celebrating 20 years of the fall of the Berlin Wall, and that was obviously done by the sovereign, and the sovereign being the people. So I think we should address people and we should encourage people to use the democratic tools that they have, not only to go to the ballot once in four years, but really make pressure to their representatives. I mean, it's for that reason that our institution, the Global Humanitarian Forum, is running a campaign, but there are many campaigns. And if there's one thing that I think young people are extremely skilled in, that is social networking. So I would just recommend Twitter the crap out of them. <laughs> I think that we have you've touched upon a very serious issue because we have today an organization, you know, uh, uh, running through the globe and uh, uniting and breaking the borders. Economy works without any borders. Politics starts to transcend the borders, but the democracy as a process remains locked in the national borders. And I think that is, uh, you know, the, the problem that shows that not only politics lags behind realities, but democracy as a mechanism is also lagging behind. And I agree that the modern interactive communication um, uh, instruments like, like Twitter, Facebook, all the rest of it, they give tremendous possibility to uh, to create synergies and uh, to have a certain impact on the, the decision-making process today. This guy, this guy who, who left the club from 1970, started to work on deliberative dialogic processes with traditional people from the Indians and the Maoris with the elephant continent, doing collaborative methods and doing the Obama vision and all this. All this is there. Please look at it. Thank you. And uh, the, the member of the Club of Rome will just answer the comment. So, I mean, the, the Limited Supervisor Report, when it came out, was heavily criticised for being far too unrealistic and pessimistic. In fact, the central core of that work is actually what's, what's unfolding. Um, I don't think we should be surprised about that. We've all known about it. But we were locked into a particular model of growth, which has swamped everything else. Now, in fact, the, the um, changes we're going to have to make are going to have to fundamentally revisit all of that. The concepts of growth are going to have to be rethought. The concepts of uh, economic or business activity, business models, incentives, particularly, are all going to need to be re revisited. But I, I think it, I mean, the, the uh, Berlin Wall analogy is a very good one because to me, what we're seeing is almost a complete um, revisit of what happened before the fall of the Berlin Wall. We're getting to the point where all these things are coming together. Um, and it's all about global sustainability. Climate change is one of the most important issues, but it's actually much bigger, as Martin said. And the real issue now is at what point is it going to flip? And I think we're much closer to it than people think. And we really have to be ready and prepared for it in a very positive way because this is the big opportunity. It's, it's all quite scary if you look at it in isolation. But what we're doing is fundamentally unsustainable, and this is the big chance to actually change it. So you need to look at it in a very positive sense.